People ask me, why do you do it? What makes you want to fly and share it with the world? And if I answer them honestly, I would say, I don't know. It's just something you're born with. My childhood is filled with memories on Navy bases. The sound, the smell, and the feel of an afterburner on takeoff. I always knew I wanted to be a pilot, but missed out on having that relationship with But what if you were given a chance at that? What if you were handed a gift of digitized 8mm and cockpit voice recordings? I'm not that sure. I gotta take them down. Go ahead, Taylor. Uh, we're gonna head out uh, as soon as we get around. Naval Aviator and OG YouTuber. I knew I had to put this puzzle together and knew exactly who could help me do it. Captain, U.S. Navy retired, and former Lockheed Martin Chief Test Pilot, Tom Morgenfeld. Come along on this multi-part series as we dive into the Duck Chronicles and try to tell the stories that the OG YouTuber never got to. It is my pleasure to welcome Mr. Tom Morgenfeld. Hello, Brian. How, How are, you? are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good. Well, let's start by... Uh, talking a little bit about your background, how you got into the Navy, and then how you ended up at VX4 at uh, Point Magoo in 76, or well, 74, then uh, flying with Gary. Yeah, but basically, uh, I uh, out of high school, went straight to the Naval Academy. Wow. Uh, graduation, I chose to go fly, and I'd always wanted to fly. It's always been my thing, airplanes and whatever. Mm -hmm. Went you know, through Navy flight training, went to uh, an F-8, Crusader fighter squadron on the East Coast for a couple of years. Came back, was briefly an instructor in the F-8, but then went to post-grad school and got a master's in aeronautical engineering. I always, I'm kind of a geeky airplane guy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, out of post-grad school, went right back to the fleet, did a couple more long cruises in the Crusader. And at that point, uh, decided I really wanted to uh, expand my geekiness. So I put in for test pilot school and was brash enough to ask them to send me to the Empire Test Pilot School in England. I, I was getting ready to leave there and take orders. I assumed I would be going back to Patuxent Rivers, where most all the Navy's flight test uh, work is done. Mm -hmm. And my detailer was uh, Jay Johnson, later later CNO, who had actually worked for me in that uh, in, in my second squadron. He was the detailer, and he said, where do you want to go? And I said, well... Pax River. I'm a test pilot. I'm supposed to be at Pax. He said, well, there's not much going on there right now, but there are some really neat things going on at VX4 at Point Magoo. Mm -hmm. And I said, you mean send me back to California? <laughs> and, and he said, you bet. I said, that's fine. His last flight with in uh, VF114 was January 16th of 74. Um, and then there's, there's an entry that shows that he... I guess was discharged from VF-114 and his logbook is empty until April. He shows up at Miramar, May 22nd, 1974, his first flight there, and it's a US-2. Um, and I understand that's a, a, a prop plane, not not very sexy for a guy that just got done flying fighter jets in Vietnam. Huh? <laughs> no, but but in a way, a challenge in its own in its own right. Every airplane's got its own little challenges. Huh? I'm a general aviation pilot, too, and believe me, they'll help you more so than a jet will a lot of times. Uh, <laughs> I see quite a bit of uh, logbook entries. He's flying that, and yeah, you're right. You're you're leaving uh, Miramar, and you're going elsewhere. So I, I see Nellis on there, you know, some of the destinations. The squadron had a detachment at, at, in Las Vegas, and we used the US-2, and a, we had a C-1, which is pretty much the same airplane, only specifically designed for cargo. We spent a lot of time going back and forth. And my job in VX4, which turned out to be a better deal than uh, this Ace Vale Aimville, at least for me it was, uh, I got involved with exploiting Russian airplanes. Okay, 9 o'clock, about a mile, coming right out of Star Bay Valley. I can't see him. Okay, he's coming in. Uh... You're just going to have to keep going. Okay, we've got to be coming 12 o'clock over the top of the camp. You're back at the pit. It's straight over the top of the pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about that. During your time at VX4, um, the U.S. government came into possession of a couple of the MiGs, right? And they had them out in, um, was it Nellis or was it Groom Lake? And they would 
have a select few of you guys go out there and learn to fly these, and then, yeah, they'd bring in the uh, the Top Gun guys and have them fly against them as well, right? You may talk a little bit about that. Yeah, a little hard. I have to watch what I say because I've signed, sure. a lot of, signed a lot of things. I understand. We, uh, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> I don't need to go to jail. Uh, <laughs> We, we yeah we had we had several of them makes uh, typically we'd have people deploy to Nellis they'd fly up into the any of the Nellis ranges up in that area and we would meet them one way or another fight them do performance uh, comparisons next to them whatever uh, it was a good way to earn a living for mm -hmm. sure at that point Duck was working with us somehow uh, flying against the MiGs. <laughs> Where is he now? I don't see him. Uh, he's right quick. Underneath the cloud, but I'm turning like that a spotty one anyway. He's going to pop out of the cloud in a minute. Yeah. Oh, he's going out of the clouds. Hey, he's coming up right. Oh, I'm just like, oh, okay. Some actual time in in the MiG was it the 17 and the 21? You said I've flown four different Russian airplanes. Yeah, I, mainly the MiG 21 uh, and a little bit of the 17. Uh, one time I had more time in the MiG 21 than anybody in the Navy. It wasn't much because uh, you're getting it a half an hour to pop, <laughs> but I had well over 100 hours in it. Which you know when you're doing point fours, point fives. Talk about what that feels like. First time you got in this thing. Oh. Are you thinking like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to do this? <laughs> well, exactly, yeah, and it's, you know, it's uh, the forbidden fruit aspect of it is huge, and also uh, one thing you do not want to fumble the golden football. Oh yeah, you, you know, you dare not. Where is he, Duck? Uh, what's in the car, guy? Duck from you to due south now, okay, coming up on the southeast, three miles. Okay, that's, I got the little guy coming through behind you there, Rattler. Okay, I got the. On the, uh, task guy then. I'm really curious, like, again, impressions when you first met him and start flying with him. And then maybe talk also about the purpose of VX-4 and the projects you guys were working on together at the time. Uh, VX-4 was the, an operational test squadron for fighter aircraft and air-to-air -air weaponry. So we were doing, at that time, uh, F-4s advancements in their radar mainly at that time. And then the F-4S was coming along. So we did operational tests, which is opposed to uh, developmental test. We're out there trying to make sure things work for the guy in the cockpit. There was that Ace Vale Aim Vale uh, test going on at the desert. Squadron was was very busy. He flew a lot of F-4s while, while he was at VX-4. So can yep. you talk a little bit about what you guys may have been doing? Was it safety chase? Was it filming? Or were you testing certain new equipment that you had outfitted on these airplanes? Technical, but yet operational. Mm -hmm. yeah. We kind of crossed the line sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was that was the main thrust. And Gary, Gary was one of, of course, he had a lot of time in the F-4 mm -hmm. and was highly thought of in the squadron for that. So mm -hmm. we had some, some of those tests were... Pretty hairy. Um, he also started flying F-14s there. Um, I mm -hmm. got his first flight in an F-14, 19th of January, 76. Okay. And all told, he got close to 40 hours in the F-14 before he left. Were you, I guess, responsible for, for bringing the F-14 into the fleet and doing some evals on it or some operational qualifications or anything like that? Or was it already in the fleet and you guys were trying to exploit its capabilities further? Number two. Okay. Uh, it was already in the fleet. One of the things we did, we did at VX4 is write the tactical manual, too, so the guys in the fleet don't have to figure out what to do. We mm -hmm. went out and went through those missions as best we could, as realistically as we could, and then would write the tactical manual. So. I don't have a ton of... I have no 8 millimeter from VX4, and now talking to you, I'm guessing that's because probably couldn't do a lot of that stuff with what you yeah, guys were yeah. working on, right? Right, um, yeah. If you can remember, like when you when you first met him, your impressions, um, any funny stories, uh, his personality quirks, anything like that. Well, we got on right very well right from the start. That's why <clears throat> we went camping together and 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 everything. You know, we we just hit it off. He had uh, <clears throat> I have a rather bizarre sense of humor. I tend to needle people. Some people don't like. I don't mean to be nasty, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a very 
Don Ricklesy kind of sense of humor. And Gary, <laughs> Gary and I were fairly kindred spirits on that. We used to have a lot of chuckles between the two. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got along, obviously got along very, very well. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, thanks for that picture. <laughs> yeah, look, at I, I, you know, this is one of my favorite pictures. It had to have been, what, 76? Because that's when you showed up there, right? Uh, yeah. And who owned the VW camper van? Is that yours? That's ours. We All bought right. that, we bought that uh, while we were stationed in England, going through test bus school. Okay, very cool. You, you'll also note that's back when I was coloring my hair, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two memories of that camping trip <laughs> and uh, these will probably make you laugh and see if you remember that first night when it was time to go to bed you guys said we're sleeping in the camper you guys are sleeping out here in the tent and I was, I'll admit I was a little freaked out and scared you know I was five or six years old and thinking I'm out here all alone in this tent and there's strange noises going all around and you guys were in the in the mini camper there Nice and cozy, and probably having a few Budweisers. <laughs> uh, we might have been doing that. I don't. I don't remember putting you out there on your own, but it's entirely possible. <laughs> You're gonna you make know, a man I, out of you. Make a man out of you. You yeah. bet. <laughs> and the second thing I remember is is fishing. I think we were trout fishing, right? Correct. And I remember your son kept catching fish. He did. And I wasn't. And so every time he'd catch a fish, I'd yank my, my thing out of the water and run over to where he was. <laughs> and I remember my dad scolding me saying, that's, you know, that's poor etiquette. You don't do that. Just sit right here. And I, <laughs> I, I do remember you being somewhat dissatisfied when we were fishing. I, that was good. Uh, Any um, particular stories you remember or flying experiences with Gary that, that stand out to you or uh, just... Um, yeah, uh, not... I would just say a couple things because, as I said, we probably didn't fly together five times, maybe. Mm -hmm. Time looking through there, let's see. I think the first time I flew a duck was fifth uh, of August in '76 in in the A4. When we did fly together, two things: he had a great reputation in the squadron. Besides, be, he was obviously well liked, but he had a, a reputation as being a good driver amongst a bunch of good drivers, mm. which I think counts for something, right? Yeah. And uh, I do remember being impressed with how nice and smooth he was when we uh, when we did fly together. We were really flying, right? I, you got me looking through my logbook. There are a couple of days I flew four or five flights mm -hmm. in three or four different kinds of airplanes. I mean, oh, everything wow. from a MiG-23 and a MiG-21 to the to the US-2. Uh, we, we were... We were busy, and looking back at it, there there was probably the busiest flying I've, time I have ever had. Do you guy? Do you recall recording sorties and, and listening to them on on the on the playback? And we can listen to one of them, but it it sounds to me like it's it's air combat training. It is. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I guess it would be. I never got involved with that with the, with those airplanes. We I, I got a chance to fly the YF seventeen as part of that F eighteen buildup. And we did get, I still have the voice from those. Uh, but just basically, for lack of a better way of saying it, there's a cassette recorder in there that records all the audio. Just listen and comment about what you're hearing, what, what they might be doing, and, and uh, anything that you hear that is worth commenting on, just feel free. Steady on, 12 o'clock, 24 miles. And duck from you, there are 10 left at 23 right now. Roger. Rattler from you, 12 o'clock, 18. The wingman's on the south side, holding hands. That? Rattler, just that's wisely. Fight at two. Range 15, 12 o'clock. Okay, I got a contact on the nose here at uh, 15 miles. And they're holding hands. Okay, I got the lead guy locked up, Steve. Okay. Bring it back a little. Oh, shit. It broke lock. God damn it. I just fucking Okay, I'm locked on the outside man. Let's come back to it now. It we can lock. take a fox on the trail man. Range five miles. Roger, he's uh, 30 left knot, five. I'm 10 up. left at five miles. Slide to high. Okay, I'll tell you I got one guy coming to my nose here. That's all. Okay, that's by the first guy. Okay, I got this guy at 2 o'clock. I'll keep an eye on him. Fox two, I'm down. Fox two, I'm out. Don. Okay, I got somebody down here. Okay, I know Joe and Bill. You got this guy. Okay, four o'clock, four o'clock, four o'clock, four o'clock. 
Okay, I got Bill out here at my 4 o'clock. He just uh, snuck in on me there. Keep it going. Fuck you. Uh, Bill is behind you or something. Yeah, he's right on me behind me. Where is he now, Doc? Okay, it's back there at 6. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Yeah, I'm in deep trouble here. I don't think I can do anything. Watch the altitude. Right. I lost you, man. Okay, uh, is he? Say again? I think I still got Bill on me, but I don't have him back there. Hey, hey tall on the zone. He's about 2,000 feet behind you, Colson. That's a good shot, Bill. Hey, tall on, hey, tall on me, Bill. Yeah, on the A4 going up. Okay. Okay, let's have him break it off. Roger, disengage, uh, I'm going to dash 5, this is 2. Roger, control, copies, disengage, 2 and 7, vector towards home plate. Rattler flight, vector 060. This is plate is fucked up. What? Uh, God damn Rattler it. flight, so you fuel, and if you've got enough for another one. Yeah, we're 63, over that. Yeah, 5 4. The bunny. Fuck. What's the matter, Jerry? Oh, the fucking straps are uh, locked tighter than a drum, the fucking seat doesn't move up and down. Somebody's not happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was definitely an intercept. Did you get a little? little flip. Yes. Get a little flavor of how how confused things can get at times. <laughs>